Hi, my name is Michael Dell. I'm a Gunawage Rono living with special needs. When I was interviewed, I had an idea for a show for people from Gunawage living with disabilities. Today is the start of that show, Walk in My World. Often, people with disabilities lead sheltered lives and their interactions are limited to caregivers and family members. I hope this show will bring you awareness of these people, their families, their lives, and their dreams for the future. Welcome back to another episode of Walk in My World. Today we are going to be talking about another different topic. This time we're going to be introducing the topic of uh, blindness. When you are blind. Um, when you are blind, we you can have it many different ways. Today I'm going to be interviewing Lynn and Ross. Lynn DeLille and Ross Mator. Lynn is uh, going through this kind of thing right now and she's graciously agreed to uh, come on Walk My World to explain how it, things are for her right now. Thank you Lynn and Ross and uh, welcome to Walk in My World. Thank you. So uh, Lynn, what kind of uh, uh, blindness do you, do you have? Uh, it's called, it's a result of uh, a CVO, central vein occlusion. I actually have had that happen to my left eye over 20 years ago and I'm legally blind on my left eye. My vision is uh, 2300 there. And as you may know, 2020 is really good vision, perfect vision. 2300 means I, what, what I see at 20 feet is what you would see if somebody with good vision at 300 feet. So that's how bad my vision is on my left eye. And then recently, uh, about six years ago now, the same thing happened in my right eye. Not as severe, central vein occlusion, but the, uh, the secondary effects of it, one was, um, which I'm going through, which causes the real uh, uh, low vision for me, is macular um, edema. It's like uh, a, a blister in the back of, inside in the back of my eye and the blister gets bigger, so the bigger it gets, more fluid inside, makes my vision less. So that is, um, it ranges from being okay because I get injections for that, to really, really bad, to, you know, my best vision is 2080. But initially, because of the central vein occlusion, I have lost permanent vision. Uh, I see, I do not see some things, for, like for instance, reading, then the second letter or the third letter is completely gone. So it's very difficult for me to read even with glasses that and magnifying glasses that help me. My eye has to keep constantly moving to see the next letter, uh, contrary to how it used to be, where you just kind of scan very easily. So um, it's, it's a big, it's a drastic change and there's a lot of new things going on in my life because of it. Uh, can you elaborate, Mike? Uh... Um, well, I when I first realized what happened on my only good eye, I knew right away what it was because it had happened before. And I went to the, the Royal Vic, and I've been eventually see a retinal spe specialist, and he was treating me. And with the macular edema, I've had. Oh, over three years, maybe about twenty to twenty-five injections so in my eye. Four now. Yeah, five. maybe five, four, five years of injections, about maybe every six weeks to to help with my. Uh, and and this is not um, a cure or it's a treatment that so, works for me, but it may not work, which eventually so is, was the case. The injections just slow it down. It kind of dries up the the it it's the just swelling, the, the fluid swelling. Fluid up. Yeah. yeah it was a it's a, and it's 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 a, a drugs that I had to pay for so I spent thousands of dollars having this done um, 
they had tried a steroid uh, uh, treatment, but that I got glaucoma and cataracts with that. So I had had cataract surgery and I had had laser surgery and medication for glaucoma. So they switched me to something else. And now I'm awaiting a new uh, drug that was just approved. Uh, there's a launching at the end of this of June, this, this month. And uh, it's an it's, um, implant in my eye of a slow release steroid med medication that may help and it would last from five to six months. And that would give me vision, my, the best vision I would have, which is maybe 2080. And because it's not anything that's really functional per se, I went to the Montreal Association for the Blind for services and he immediately took away my driver's license. So that was about the biggest change. Oh, no. Yeah, that was a major, major loss of depend independence and, um, you know, ch real changing uh, a life for me, that, that part. So um, I'm coping, I think, very well because Ross is uh, my chauffeur now, <laughs> for one thing. And I had to not work, uh, you know, the usual way. I work on the computer at home and do my banking there online. And I find that very difficult for, and then just the regular everyday routine things at home, cleaning, even washing the dishes, uh, you know, sweeping the floor, dusting. I can't see any of those things, you know, to do it properly. And I'm always getting, will you not please do the dishes anymore? <laughs> You know, things like that. And uh, I think I, I met somebody in town going through a, kind of a similar thing, a severe loss of vision. We were talking and I, and I said to her, because this is it, you know what the worst thing about it is? And she blurted out immediately, everybody thinks you're a snob. <laughs> I said, yeah, you can't, I can't, Mike, you're this far, I can hardly see your face. So I really can't see people. Uh, maybe six feet away, and I don't say hello, and I don't acknowledge them, and unless they acknowledge me, and I find that very frustrating and difficult because I like to. I'm a social person, and I like to um, uh, talk with people, and it's very very difficult to think that, you know, what's wrong with me, or you know, uh, how come I'm not saying hello and things like that. So that, that's, that's really hard. And one funny thing about it, though, is that when Dross is driving me around in the car, he'll say to me, wave. So I'll wave, like I said, to who? He goes, I don't know. I don't know their name, but I know you know them. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so hard. So. A lot of times, you know, people, people <laughs> see her and they say hello. And it's, you know, it would be like, how come she's not saying hello? And I'm like, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> I don't know, but if you could see them, you'd know who it was. <laughs> So it's really, really that's yeah, strange, I, and all. it's. I have one more uh, question that yeah. wasn't uh, in the in the thing that I sent you. Um, you have a you have a disabled adult daughter. Yeah. Has she has she picked up on this in any way? I don't think so. You know, because um, what I count on now is more, uh, and I, I in so many other ways, I, I kind of focused on my sixth sense, I call it. Yeah. You know, and Sarah has this um, communication thing with me, I guess her mother especially, that goes without saying, you know, or seeing that we kind of in sync with each other. She has a lot of assistance though with other people coming in yeah. and we have a routine. Sarah is, you know, into routine. So everything that we do together that she has in her room and her daily routine is you know, something that we have done pat. So yeah. it's not, it's, you know, cooking is a little bit hard, you know, but I, I manage and Ross too, you know, helps out with but, all of that. Uh, of course, uh, driving her around, I can't do that anymore. But uh, overall, uh, uh, taking only by the connection between you and her hasn't changed because of your I don't think physical so. limitation. I know, you know what? I think maybe in a way it's gotten better because I, I'm home a lot now. I, I can't go out in the car. I don't go to work per se, you know, every day like I used to. So I'm home a lot. Oh, yeah. I think it actually is a lot better for everybody in my house. The kids, I'm, I'm, I mind the grandchildren. 
and I have uh, taken on some foster kids. Since I'm home, I might as well do something like that. But one more thing that I find difficult is I have uh, two young, very young grandchildren, and I feel very uh, insecure about watching them, minding them by myself, because I don't, can't see you know, exactly what they're up to, and I can't see that they have cookie, chocolate cookie marks on their face <laughs> when their mother comes. And I say, no, they didn't have any cookies, and they did. So I forget to wipe, because I don't see it. <laughs> okay. So, it's... Is there, is, 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 there, is there days that you feel, oh my God, yeah. uh, why me? And you, like, I don't want to say that you're depressed, but you feel down. Yeah, well, you know, in the beginning, I was changing so much, and there was a big realization of everyday things that I had to get used to. First of all, oh my goodness, I can't do this. And he used to hear it all the time. Oh, I can't see. And he, you know, you're talking to somebody, you say, come and see this. Or did you see that? Or look at this. And like, oh, I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. I was always saying that to remind people, because I don't look like I can't see. You know, so I, I find it really, really hard to adjust to like things, a new life, you know. Things too, like um, she, she would do a lot of things with writing, yeah. like, um, like uh, whatever, whatever she, the things she likes to think about, talk about, write about. And now that's a challenge now. So sometimes I, I, I help, but you know what's hard? It's she thinks fast, I type slow. <laughs> I'm the same it's way. It's frustrating. Yeah. So, and, and then, and then I, or I'll, she'll write something, and then, you know what, I don't think about just the thought she's saying, I'm editing it. And, <laughs> you know, it gets a little, uh, you have to really uh, kind of work it out. Yeah, there's just such technology to help me out with that, yeah. which I haven't But it's, uh, to. it's all about adjustment. I, but some I, things are funny, I guess you could say, because I'll make a grocery list. I'll write it out, you know, big enough or maybe careful enough so he could read it, and then I find out, <laughs> give it to him. And there's, I didn't write anything because the pen wasn't even writing, you know. So I, I <laughs> we know, have to laugh. Sometimes. I know from myself. Okay, I just uh, spent uh, the good part of the spring uh, working with the MEB Mackay for to get uh, this thing called Zoom Text that helps you read those things. Well, like newspaper articles and and the such. Um, do you think you'll ever get the courage to go back to the MB Mackay and get uh, that special software put on your computer? 